The know nothing state is not really the know nothing state. It's not a know nothing state. Let me describe it a little bit. First of all, <coughs> I, I think the most uh, powerful characteristic of the normal set state you occupy during the day and the know nothing state is that you deliberately set aside your knowledge base. You, you, you become very childlike. You're, you're very present in the moment. You're very sensitive to your sensory experience. That's where your attention is. Um, and I, I know people who've spent inappropriate lengths of time in the know-nothing state, and they're, they're starving to death. They're not taking care of themselves. So some little arrangement with your unconscious to kick you out of the know-nothing state for purposes of health and maintenance would be a useful thing if you're going to play in this area. So a know-nothing state is a state where I actually think you know all and only the things you need to know to accomplish the intention you set before you went into the know-nothing state. So the sequence is figure out what the hell you want, what class of experience. It may not be well-defined, but at least there are examples you can imagine that came from your personal history or you've seen and heard other people do, which are members of the set of experiences you want to have. So. If you can formulate an intention very precisely, intensive definition, go for it. Many times you just have a feel, like we were talking the other day, uh, Rui, for example. You, you just have a feel, and it's not a describable <coughs> feeling, it's a sensation. What Vicky showed us last week. And that's enough. So you could arrange to request a, the generation of and templates to take you into certain classes of experience. That's what you want to explore. My intention is to have these classes of experience. That's the arranging of the intention. Um, at the point where you're, you're at now, not just you, but I mean the whole group, I think it would be very, very useful and prudent once you find a way of formulating the intention, whether it's tacit and experiential or linguistic as well, that you would get a buy-in from your unconscious. When you get the buy-in, it's a good time to set up an exit plan. So as you <laughs> lead me into this vortex unconscious, as you said you will, you support this project, um, any signals of danger, um, either to my health or well-being, blah, 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 any signals that I, I need to break out of this situation and feed myself, cleanse myself, take care of myself, I'm going to put you in charge of popping me out when any of those conditions occur. Will you accept responsibility? So this is a way of taking care of yourself, but at the same time committing 100% to the experience that you're about to go into. So when Bandler and Pusilic said to me, look, we've been to your courses, we've heard you talk with some precision about the operations that I use, I use this word, I'll say, the mind, <laughs> if it exists. Um, and we're having, we have a problem. We can do miracles in our gestalt group, but we have been singularly unsuccessful in passing how we do that to the training at the mental level, getting people to perform as they did. So the know nothing state, let me give you another example. Uh, I um, came from a week trip to Red Rocks, which is premier climbing area for technical rock climbers in the United States. I think it's actually better than Yosemite. Or sacrilege. Okay. <clears throat> um, and when I'm on lead, when you're climbing second, you can do whatever you want. You got a tough rope, so you're going to fall that far if you're, your lead climber is good. Uh, when you're on lead, well, now you got another game. It's called the sharp end of the rope because that's where you can actually get hurt. So as you climb, you take these canning devices and these other stoppers and so forth, and you slot them very carefully into <coughs> cracks, crevices, etc. so that if you fall, the rope attached to your harness, which goes through this piece of protection, is held at the bottom by your belay. So you're going to fall. Whatever distance you are above the last piece you put in, doubled, plus rope stretch, which is about 11%. So as I'm climbing, uh, when I'm moving on the rock, I'm in a know-nothing state. I don't, I don't know my name. I don't know, I got two kids and two grandchildren and blah, blah, blah. I don't know who Carmen Bossett is. I'll talk to you. 
when at certain points, if I'm coming to a roof or a section that looks a little more difficult than what I've been climbing, I will go in, I will come out of the no nothing state and make explicit calculations. If I come off as I'm going over this roof, what will I do? If it's an airfall, who cares? If it's not an airfall, there's a ledge I'll hit, then I'm going to engineer protection so that the fall is curtailed before I strike the ledge. That way I can protect myself. So even in this sort of uh, um, unusual sport, rock climbing, there are parts of it that are absolutely no-nothing, and parts of it where I pop in and out to make calculations <laughs> make sure I can do the no-nothing state safely. I think people actually spend significant parts of the day in no nothing states, but without intentions, typically. So it's sort of random experience. Huh? Nothing wrong with that. So it's like when there's zone out, zone Yeah, when you're zoning out, you know. So I'm doing it. On the other hand, the, 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 maybe the coolest place to get a no nothing state is to go, f don't get out. Borrow uh, a child, pre-verbal child, who's mobile, who moves well, so 18 miles, you know, up to two years, and get down on the floor and do everything they do, become them, do this deep second position with the child. They have no internal level. So that's gone. By the way, a little side question here. Think of the NASA game, think of the alphabet game, think of the breath of life, etc. How many people exited those exercises with no internal dialogue? Usually, if the exercise is done well, automatically the internal dialogue is on. You're activated. The internal dialogue will simply reduce the quality of your state, so it's not good. Uh, for those who didn't raise your hand, this is an invitation for you to practice these these games until you achieve that. That's a good barometer. That's a good marker of how well you're doing these states. Uh, okay, so you go to the kid, do everything the kid does, and you'll lose track of time. You'll get time destruction. You'll get beautiful silence. You'll get tired. <laughs> because that age you're constantly in motion, and you're an adult, and you haven't been doing that for a while. So I think that's a really, really fine, fine place to get it. And then, of course, as I have been pushing them, my descriptions of the actual intention behind the games is not the games, but the state that the games can generate so that you don't have to do the game in order to get the state. So you're going to want to be able to recreate in your body the sensations you experience with the child as the entry point back into the know-nothing state that then you can apply to specific projects.